Just why is this and previous UK governments putting the entire car manufacturing industry at risk with their crazy EV new car sales mandate? No new petrol cars after 2030. Hey, that's just five years away. Are they mad? But a quick look elsewhere in the world finds that if they are mad, so is most of the rest of the world. All of them have similar targets adjusted for their own starting points. So they must all be mad then. Or do they all know something that many viewers don't? I'm Dave, I'm taking on the EV mandate, which might just destroy the UK car manufacturing industry. Well, just a quick mention, thank you to our Patreon YouTube members who already support the channel. Thanks very much for your support. We're pleased to see that most of you are actually watching those exclusive videos that will never be launched onto YouTube. Just one of the membership benefits. So what is the reason for the mandate and why is it so quick? Well, actually it turns out not to be so quick. In fact, most of you will have noticed that cars are getting bigger and heavier all the time. We do like big, heavy cars. In fact, so much so that some car parks now cannot take the weight of all the SUVs that are now rumbling down our streets. The average petrol or diesel car is now heavier, wider and taller than at any time ever, even way back in the days when they had solid steel chassis. Now, in contrast, the average EV has been getting very much lighter. With a more restricted power source, the battery, the manufacturers have decided to follow Formula One. And they've been working really, really hard to make lighter, more efficient EVs. You see, a lighter EV needs a smaller battery. It costs less to make and it goes further on a single charge. Makes a lot of sense. On the other hand, the engines of our current ICE cars they're becoming less efficient, dragging all that excess weight around. Many of our latest SUVs seem to be following the US, with BMW, Mercedes and Audi all making huge SUVs with engines that regard three litres as the baby of the pack and rise up to five litres for the serious motorist. Which seems that the government pleas to reduce pollution and CO2 have not yet reached the legacy auto industry. They just keep getting bigger and bigger, and the fuel consumption just keeps increasing. Average miles per gallon and CO2 emissions have actually been getting worse recently. Now, those governments around the world, they have to do something. They are all very concerned about pollution. And that bit of it seems to be getting slightly better. But they're also worried about CO2, which is definitely getting very much worse. So if please don't work, what will? Which well, sort of explains why the UK government has now imposed the 2030 ban on the sale of new, ICE only, that's internal combustion engine, vehicles. And that is a serious target. And I know many that are out there who will say, well, so what? We produce just 1%. So what about China? But that's the whole point that you deliberately miss out. China is already the world's largest producer of EVs. If they can, over time, convince all the motorists to go EVs, and they are well on the way towards achieving that goal. In 2025, more than half of all new car sales were EVs, and EV new car sales are accelerating at an exponential rate. Soon, at that rate, they will be ahead of us. Their transport CO2 production will be lower than ours, by far. But here is what you also miss. See, that constant rejection of EVs, those continual lies and myths, that actually just slows down our rate of adoption. And if things don't change, and very quickly, we're going to end up one of the dirtiest polluters and largest transport CO2 producers in the world. Now, this is not the UK government punishing you. This is not the UK government standing alone and isolated in the world. This is not the UK government trying to spoil your fun or telling you what you have to drive. This is actually just the UK government joining in with 
all of the countries in the whole of the world and doing its own bit for what almost all now regard as a serious problem that requires a solution today. There is not a single country in the world that's not doing something. Now, most of you quote China. OK, let's look at that. We in the UK produce about 50% of our grid electricity from renewables. Germany, about 59%. And for China, 2025 so far, 36%. Whoa! See, even China is now heading very rapidly away from coal and onto renewables. And despite the best efforts of oil-loving Trump, the US is now about 20% renewables. But states differ wildly. California, for example, has more than 90% of all its days with renewables providing 100% of the demand for some of the time during the day. Texas, the oil state, that sees days with renewable, renewables providing 75% of demand. Oklahoma and Kansas, they've got very large percentages of renewables. So in general, transport's a massive producer of CO2. It uses more fuel power than our homes. There is an answer to both those problems. See, EVs are here today, as is home insulation. <laughs> so the UK government has set about tackling those issues in the UK, like it or not. This and previous governments have started to tackle home insulation. New house builds are very heavily regulated to make them extremely efficient in energy usage. Older homes now qualify for massive grants, free boilers, free insulation, to reduce their energy consumption. Well, just ask, who out there doesn't want lower home energy bills? Hands up, please. Yeah. And who out there wants to stop paying the UK average £110 a month in petrol and would prefer to spend £15 in electricity? Hands up. Yet when the government, this and the last few, tried to lower your motoring costs, you said no. And you began to get up campaigns, spread rumours, believe lies, and you blocked our charging bays. Why? That's just plain crazy. And many people, knowing no better, just followed you in that crazy quest. And that slowed down EV adoption rate. And that has put a massive burden on the car manufacturers, both EV and ICE. It's you, you're destroying our own industries. So what does this 2030 deadline actually mean for the companies building our cars? Well, it puts them in a truly impossible position. See, first, there's the massive investment. Uh, we're ramping up to 2030. It isn't just about tweaking production lines. It demands a ground-up reinvention of factories. It involves new supply chains and research and development. And all of that costs billions. Already EV and battery factories, those that are proceeding, have not yet been cancelled or suspended, they're aiming for production not before 2027 or 2028. That doesn't leave an awful long time before the ban comes into force. Well, in that context, 2030 isn't just a distant target. It's almost tomorrow. And that money has to come from somewhere. The traditional car makers already discovered that their initial half-hearted EV approach failed miserably, and it cost them an absolute fortune. Just when inflation is high, when global economics are heading in totally the wrong direction, and just when Trump goes off on his crazy tariff rampages. See, then you've got the 2030 EV new car sales mandate. Is it going to happen? Is it a joke? Will they backtrack? Now, you see, a wrong decision here could easily finish off a large number of car makers. If you plan on the government backing down and keeping the ICE cars and hybrids uh, and they don't, then you're going to have nothing to sell in 2030. They'll all be illegal. If you go all in on EVs and find they do backtrack and give you another 5, 10 or more years of ICE sales, you might end up with loads of EVs that you can't sell. Now, this isn't some vague goal. It's a legally binding rule forcing manufacturers to sell more electric vehicles each year as a core part of the UK's strategy to cut national carbon emissions. Will they back down? It's actually already too late for that. 2030 is rapidly approaching. See, last year, after a motoring delegation bombarded the government for change, the rule was bent slightly. 
They kept the same overall target, 100% by 2030, but they gave the manufacturers a little bit longer to hit the 2026 target. Now, at that point, they could have cancelled the whole mandate if they were going to do it. Golden opportunity. They didn't. So for 2025, the star target is still 28% of all new cars sold to be EVs, and it's still quite possible we'll hit that. Now, previously, if they missed it, they faced massive fines. Now, wow, it's a lot softer, a lot gentler. No really heavy fines this year. They're going to allow them even more leeway to count in future sales if their production is ramping up enough to support it. They also can count in some PHEVs, HEVs, and ultra, ultra low emission ICE cars. So while the new government is doing its bit with those added flexibilities, the pressure is still immense. It forces manufacturers to push EVs into a market where many interested parties, that includes themselves, the oil giants and many others in the motor trade, they're still fighting to try and get them cancelled. <laughs> and while all this is happening, the UK doesn't exist in a bubble. You, see, you have established EV giants now, like Tesla, on the one hand, and that's entering the utility market as an electricity supply in the UK, and you can bet it's going to be cheap and massively beneficial to EV car owners who charge at home. That's about two-thirds of all households. And it'll probably be specifically beneficial to Tesla owners. Well, then there's the tidal wave of more affordable Chinese EV brands arriving on British shores ready to undercut domestic manufacturers struggling with the high cost of retooling and refurbishing. They already offer EVs much better technically and spec-wise than anything we make, but at prices far cheaper than the petrol and hybrid cars they will replace. Yet yeah, they're already cheaper. So this leaves British-based car makers caught between the rock government-mandated investment and the hard place of being outcompeted on price. Now, the car manufacturers are not taking this lying down. Take parent company Vauxhall, that's Stellantis, and they've been crystal clear, warning the UK uh, its production could stop altogether. They'll pull out if the government doesn't do more to get people buying EVs. They state this, well, not so much as a threat, it's the stark reality they're facing. But why? Is it possibly because they chose not to take the first few years of warning seriously, believing or praying that the UK government would have to back down? Did they believe they were too big to fail? Well, besides, how many jobs do we have left making what Stellantis now makes? See, all the car production has already gone abroad. We've got left a mere, what, electric van offering. And we've sold, what, 2,620 vans so far this year. Is that actually a viable business? Versus what they used to do, which was over 100,000 units from a factory. Well, Stellantis' loss, if it goes, can easily be made up by the Chinese with cracking new, innovative, cheap EVs. And they're desperate to get them in here. That includes EV vans, by the way, with the Maxus range, and that's got a price that just seems to seriously undercut Stellantis, Ford and Mercedes. The Chinese would not be sorry to see Stellantis go. And I'm not sure we'd miss them either. So what do you think? Is the 2030 ban a necessary shock to the system for a green transition, or is it a death sentence for a great British industry. should say once great British industry, should I? Is the government doing enough to manage this essential shift away from fossil fuels, or is it setting our car makers up to fail? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Oh, and if you want to stay on top of the real stories behind the headlines, make sure you subscribe and you hit that notification bell. There's no doubt the UK car industry is at a crossroads that it brought on all by itself. It didn't believe the EV revolution 10 years ago was real. It laughed it off and many still believe it will fail. But ask any existing EV owner who pays £5 to fill their battery at home what car they will buy next. Also ask those EV drivers that happily do 450 mile road trips with no hassle at all. But we will never go back to expensive, smelly, polluting fossil fuels. The car industry didn't believe the various governments and their EV targets were real. 
and many still don't. But now, well, they're almost out of time. Think about Kate and Leonardo on the Titanic. It's sailing along merrily, it hits an iceberg, and nobody worries. This is an unsinkable ship, cannot sink, not even worth a tiny consideration. It'll be fixed and we'll get to New York a bit late. Then as time goes by and the list increases, they begin to wonder, mm, did I get that wrong? Can it sink? And then they suddenly start launching the lifeboats and they start to realise, actually, it is sinking. But surely someone's going to come and rescue them, even if it is sinking. And then you reach that dreaded moment which dawns on you when they realise it's sinking, the lifeboats have all gone, and nobody is coming to rescue them. Now, the motor industry has gone through most of those stages. They barely even noticed EVs a decade ago. Never going to happen. Then EVs went into mass production and actually overtook the number one best-selling car in the world, a Toyota petrol car. They knew it was happening then, but they ignored it. Well, now it's reached that stage where they know the motor industry, the century-old empire, is over. It's sinking, but they're still holding out for that rescue. And the trouble is, like Kate and Leo found, that rescue is now totally outside of their control. And they also know there's not enough time or money left to do what they should have done nearly a decade ago. Just imagine this. Where would we be today if in 2015 some or all the car makers had said, OK, it's a totally new technology. It is better in many ways for some of our customers. It's also better for the government and it's better for the planet. So let's just accept the arrival of the new technology. Let's build it into our plans and even plan for it one day to take over in a smooth, profitable transition. If only. I'm Dave. And thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe.